What's up everyone? Hope you guys are good. And today we're gonna speak English, all right? We're gonna try and use um, an easier vocabulary for you guys who understand this live. And uh, for those who don't know me, my name is John. I'm a language mentor and I've developed a method for us to learn a language, you know, in a natural, easy way. And today I have here how can I say your name in a in an American accent? No, I, I don't know. It should be Andreas. Andreas. Andreas I'm not sure. <laughs> Something like that. Got it. All right. So today I have here Andreas with me. He's from Greece. And um, can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Okay. So hi everyone. My name is Andreas. I am from Cyprus, which is close to Greece. Joao. <laughs> Almost. Cyprus which is uh, a very small island in Europe, really close to Greece. Mm -hmm. And yeah, that's it pretty much. I just love languages and uh, I'm here to share my knowledge with you. All right, that's great. And tell me, how many languages you speak today? Okay, so in a pretty decent level and acceptable in my, let's say, mm -hmm. my standards level, I speak four. So that would be Greek, which is my native language, which is spoken here in Cyprus. English, Italian, and Spanish at a good level, and now I'm learning Portuguese, Brazilian Portuguese. And what's your definition of speaking a language? Because you, you okay. told me, oh, in some languages I have this decent level. So what is it, this speaking? Okay, so that would be a really long topic to discuss, but uh, basically I prefer quality over quantity. So before, unlike a lot of people, I prefer learning a, a language at a pretty decent level. I mean, in order to be able to have a deep conversation in, in a vast majority of topics, let's say in a language, rather than knowing, okay, a more mediocre level and in many languages and actually not be able to communicate in a deep conversation with a native for more than like five or 10 minutes, you know? That's it, more or less. Mm -hmm. All right. And you can develop this, you can really go deep into these languages today? Um, I think on those four languages that I've mentioned before, I, um, I'm pretty confident that I do. I mean, no one's, uh, no one's perfect. I mean, not even natives are perfect in their own yeah. languages. But mm -hmm. I mean, in my opinion, the more, the more you keep uh, learning, the more you keep studying, the less material there is in order to cover. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm just, I'm always like thinking of it like building a house. You just, it's a lot of work, but you just start from the basics and you keep on mm -hmm. building your way to the top. Mm -hmm. All right. So tell me, how did you start this journey of learning languages? So I'll just leave English, I'll just leave Greek outside because obviously it's my native language. And English, um, here in Cyprus, actually, uh, unlike Brazil, there are a lot of uh, private uh, institutes that our parents send us uh, from the age of, I don't know, should be, should be eight or nine years old that they start sending us to those private schools. So after our primary school, we would go twice or maybe three times a week into those private schools and they would uh, teach us English. So mm -hmm. just here in Cyprus, it's, um, I don't know, it's just everyone just takes it for granted that, okay, from the age of eight or 10, maximum you're going to be starting taking English lessons and you, eventually you're going to learn it. So that's, that's it basically for, for English. And apart from that, I also went to um, to study in, a, in an English university in the UK. So I've lived there for four years. So yeah, I can, I can say that I'm pretty, I'm pretty fluent in English. I can feel confident having a conversation in various topics in the language. Mm -hmm. uh, Italian, I started actually really late. I was, I think, 25 years old and I just wanted to visit uh, Italy. Mm -hmm. And uh, I had a friend of mine, a colleague from a class, and he told me, okay, you're going to Italy maybe you would need to just learn how to survive like phrases in order to survive because mm -hmm. in Italy it's not like or maybe your country Cyprus it told me or here in the UK that everyone speaks English so maybe you would find yourself in a situation that you'll need to use some Italian so I started mm -hmm. slowly slowly I found it easy because uh, surprisingly I found it very similar to Greek actually and English I don't know why I'm, I've never studied the history of languages 
And uh, yeah, by time, as time went by, I kept meeting Italians online and from my university. And I just practicing, as I said before, practicing every day consistently. It just gets you to where you want to be, right? Mm -hmm. And with Spanish, most, more or less the same thing. As soon as I realized that I found the, the way that I can learn language, a language, I just applied the same principles I did with Italian with Spanish too. Met uh, Spanish online, Spanish native scene online. Then I had a trip in Latin America, I've been to Argentina where I met a lot of uh, Latin Americans and with them practicing a lot and just consistency is, is a key, let's say. Mm -hmm. And after you learn Italian, Spanish kind of easier, right? Mm, it is a similar language. I, I, yeah. think, I think it is. It is pretty similar, but I think the, the in terms of grammar, Italian grammar is a bit more difficult than Spanish. There are more exceptions, let's say. Mm -hmm. So thank God I've learned Italian before. How about you? What do you think? <laughs> oh, well, Portuguese, Spanish, and Italian for me basically the grammar it's not so different. But uh, of course, some aspects they differ a little bit. But you know. There are Latin languages, so I just can't kind of got used to the fact that, you know, you have the subject and then you have this, because I've studied in school as well. I had Spanish classes in school, and um, I have relatives living in Italy, so I kind of have this, you know, Italian blood running through my veins, and I really like the language. I don't know if this makes me feel, you know, more motivated to learn it, and then, oh, the grammar, it's not so so important, so I kind of you know learn it pretty easily. That is the same thing with with you know Russian, because a lot of people would think, hey, Russian grammar it is almost impossible, and it actually is. But uh, when I started communicating this language, I find I found here a very nice person to speak to, and then Russian Russian grammar it was nothing. Like I was just talking here with this person, but uh, now. Going back to to Italian, I cannot see which one is easier or harder. Really, I don't have this. Maybe Spanish for me it's harder. Spanish for really ah because yeah, because it is really thing. similar. Yeah. Yes, yes. Thing, yeah. mm -hmm. Italian is easier, but Spanish you have a lot of similar words and uh, you kind of keep asking yourself, hey, is this word is Portuguese or Spanish? And then you have the sounds and anything. That's why I prefer. I prefer. I, I like both languages. But um, you know, I really like Italian. And today I have here an Italian student, and she's learning really, really fast. Like I got really surprised by this fact. I even mm -hmm. post a video because she's Russian, and then she started the lessons, and she's like, "Hey, I want to learn Italian. Can you help me?" For sure. Yeah, I can help you. I will help you if you help me with my Russian. All right, let's do it. What's your level in Italian? Uh, I'm a beginner. I'm starting right now. Okay, there you go. And then I, I gave her some, uh, some phrases and words for her to memorize and uh, a lot of content for her to listen. And then on the next week, she just appeared and we talked for like eight minutes, 10 minutes in, in Italian. <laughs> How come this is possible <laughs> in only one week in Russian? It's so different. How come? I don't know. It's just too nice. Just too nice. Um, let's see. What other topic I want to dive into? Ah, okay. Um, which language for you was harder and which language it was easier? Harder, okay. Um, let's say that the hardest was, I'd say Italian. Okay, I, I, I'm just going to talk about in, um, Spanish and Italian because Portuguese, I'm really beginner still. Mm -hmm. And English, I've been, I've been forced to like learn it since a young age. So I'll be talking about those two that I've learned by myself. So between Spanish and Italian, I'd say Italian was a bit more difficult just because it was the first language that I've learned by myself. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I was, I didn't know how to, I like the best way that, well, which way would function the, the best for me, you know, because it was the first time I was learning a new language. So I didn't know, shall I start by getting a book, like starting straight talking to people, like taking classes or start from grammar or vocabulary. I just didn't know how to, how to begin. As soon as I figured out my way and I found, uh, 
I like I decided on which which would be my methodology. Spanish, I could just literally apply the, um, the way I've learned Italian, the, the methodology that I came up at the end of the journey. I just literally applied it to Spanish. So it was, uh, it was a bit easier and, and a more straightforward way of learning the, the language for me. How about you? Mm -hmm. Well, the hardest language, I think it would be Mandarin Chinese, because you know, mm -hmm. it's not <laughs> difficult. But I, I'd like to think that is, you know, a complex language. You just have to, you know, really go into this language. And uh, the more you observe, the more you're going to learn it, you know. And really get to know a new person in this new culture because the structure, have you learned, like, a, the structure of Chinese before or not? Some phrases? Nah, I have no idea about it. Mm -hmm. You tell me. <laughs> mm -hmm. There are some... Um, some features that makes the language easier. For example, they don't have conjugation for verbs. Let's okay. see, the verb sh, that is to be. If you say I am, you are, he is, she is, it's going to be the same, sh. So I am, wo sh, he is, ta sh, she is, ta sh, the same thing. And then you are, ni sh. So sometimes it is easy, but sometimes it's not. You know, because you have the the tones of the language. Let's mm -hmm. say one one syllable, ma. You can say ma, ma, ma. You have a lot. So only this, I just had three different words. That's why for me, it is uh -huh. complex to learn. But at the same time, if I really like the language, you know, it becomes easier and easier. And how do you, okay, that, that's a good question. How would you start learning Chinese? Chinese, okay. Yes. First of all, what my methodology is, uh, first of all, I just, for some weird reason that everyone hates grammar, I always, I love grammar and I always start uh, by getting a book of grammar. So I think it's mm -hmm. very important to get to know the most important verbs, like the, the, the verbs, those verbs that you're going to use the most, like eat, I am, um, to have those verbs. Mm -hmm and uh, the conjugations obviously and uh, and if it if and if it's on present or on future or on past because i think if, if you really know uh, if you really understand the verb you can actually get to know what the actual person is, t is saying to you like the action mm -hmm. and in what time if it's something that happened now in the future in the past so i think it's like 50 percent of understanding what the other person says to you obviously it has to do with the pronunciation and listening and understanding what, uh, I mean, also Chinese is, is way more difficult to to understand for us that we speak Romance languages. But I mm -hmm. think start start from, I'd, start, I'd always start from grammar and then mm -hmm. literally some linking words like before, after, together, alone, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and then just move on to vocabulary and keep keep your direction towards that way. Just keep building. Mm -hmm. talk. How about you? How do you do it? All right, first first things first, I would like to, you know, watch a lot of videos in Chinese just to get the the accent, the way that they speak. Um, mm -hmm. Maybe they have some, some words that they say a lot. I pay attention to the body language. So it is a lot of features that I pay attention. And then I just watch a lot of videos. And then at the same day, I try and find a video about phonetics and pronunciation from the very beginning, mm -hmm. especially in Chinese, because you have tones and that can, you know, make your life a mess. Because if you get one tone different, you can say a different word and that can, you know, ruin your life. So I really go into this, maybe on the first day, the second day, maybe the first week, just watching and trying to observe, you know, a lot from from this language. And then I try and um, I go on some some map, maybe tandem on italki, maybe. Mm -hmm. And I try to find a Chinese person for me to talk to. And then in the second week, of course, this person has to speak you know, English or other language that I speak. And then we can communicate and she can you know, correct me when I'm wrong. That's why I prefer to you know, get this feeling, get this communication with the native from the very beginning. So she or he can correct me when I'm wrong and we can develop this conversation like they do. For example, in mm -hmm. Chinese, they're not used to this to say uh, something like, hey, how are you? 
Ni hao, ni chilama, no, another one. This is the, the way that they say it. Ni hao, ni hao ma, they, they say, sometimes, sometimes they say it, but it's not a way that they're used to say it. For example, um, if you say, if you're talking to a friend, they're gonna say to you, hey, or even ni hao. Ni hao, it's more for people they don't know. So they would say, hey, hi, ni chilama, ni chilama, it's like, have you eaten? Mm -hmm. That's, that's a way that they, they greet each other. And then you just have to answer, no, I haven't eaten. Why haven't you eaten? I don't know. And then they keep the conversation going. So that's why I like, you know, to have this native, um, just, you know, for us to talk and we exchange numbers and we talk a lot. And, you know, I take this a notebook and I started writing a lot of words, a lot of phrases. And I have here, I like to work with, uh, Asimil, have you heard of it? I've heard, I've heard of it. It's like a series of books, right? Something yes. Like that. Yes. Okay. For you to learn a lot of languages. And uh, they they start from, you know, really simple dialogues. And then they just, you know, get harder, harder, okay. and harder, and harder. So they start with, hey, how are you? You good? And then they, you know, go on and on. And I really like this book. Is it, it's a bilingual book, so you can work on two languages at the same time. Mm -hmm. And then I really like it. And then I just, you know, talk and listen to a lot of content. I'm going to see that the more that I watch and the more that I write down a vocabulary, the more I'm going to understand. So I can see, oh, now I know this word. Now I know this phrase. Maybe they have a particular way of saying one word that is not the way that we have learned in you know, school or maybe this book that I really like this book. A lot of polyglots like this book, ask me. Mm -hmm. And you just keep going, you know? What do you think about that? What do you think about, okay, a more straightforward question. What do you think about when should we start this, you know, start speaking? I was actually, I, that was my, that was what I was going to ask you too. Mm -hmm. um, I believe as soon as possible, as soon as possible, because obviously if you just know a couple of words, it won't work. You just need mm -hmm. to study, I don't know, for maybe like a week, a weekend mm -hmm. or maybe two weeks max, just to be sure that you know some basic uh, vocabulary mm -hmm. or grammar in order to, to construct a couple of phrases. But I believe that the sooner you start, the sooner, the sooner you're going to just like lose that, uh, that fear of uh, getting uh, mm -hmm. embarrassed by, maybe embarrassed by the other person that you're going to talk to mm -hmm. and he's gonna respond and you won't know what to, how to keep up with the conversation, you know? But the thing mm -hmm. is that I believe that the very first time that you start like getting out of your comfort zone and talking to the language that you know, that you barely know a couple of phrases is the time that you're gonna start getting more confidence about yourself. Mm -hmm. and, you, and that's going, and that, that is what it's going to go so that, that's what is going to push you even more and uh, will be that extra incentive for you to keep on doing you Because you'll, you'll say like, oh, it didn't really go that bad as, as, I, as I expected, you know? So I can, I can do it. I can just, if I just study a bit harder and just dedicate myself, I can actually do it, you know? But if mm -hmm. you just stay passive and okay, maybe next time and uh, I'll give it uh, one more week or two more weeks and maybe look for the perfect situation where, for example, yeah. I'll be walking by a street and listen to a couple of, let's say, English persons in Brazil, let's say that, and, and then I'll, where the circumstances are going to be better, mm -hmm. that's not going to work. I mean, you're just postponing it and the less and the less confident you're going to get for, about that very first time, you know? Mm -hmm. what, do you, what do you think about it? Yeah, that's the way I went about it because I was really shy back then, maybe I don't know, three or more years ago, I was just, you know, really uh, with my self-esteem really low. I was like, mm -hmm. I can hear and understand everything in English, but I cannot speak. But of course, I wouldn't practice with anyone because I was really afraid of, oh my God, what they're going to say about my English. I cannot do anything. And then I was uh, locking myself in the room. And then there was one day that my father just, you know, gave me this, his cell phone and okay, this is a native, you can talk to him. <laughs> There's nothing that I could do, but you know, just speak. And then I said, hi, hello, how are you? <laughs> and it was you know, one of the most 
uh, longer five minutes of my life. And then I just keep talking to this person. And then next week I was like, oh my God, I cannot accept this for me. I have to, you know, keep practicing. And then I scheduled another, another conversation with another native. And mm -hmm. I, I started talking and talking. Now today I can talk basically to everyone. I know that I still make mistakes, but uh, yeah, it changed my life a lot. So thank you, Father, if you're watching this. <laughs> If it weren't for him, I would be, you know, still locked in a room just yeah, yeah. You know, with my Portuguese and shyness. It is a very important topic today because most of my students and most of the people that I see today, they're really shy. They're really afraid of making mistakes or maybe they have this dream of, you know, getting recognized by by their, their knowledge or something like that. But they're really... Uh, in a position of, oh, everybody's going to judge me, but that's a really normal fear that mm -hmm. a human being has. So what's your, what's your take on that? What we should do when we have this fear of speaking, maybe, oh, you can do like me and get this five minutes and then on the next week you're going to you know, speak 10 minutes. I don't know. What's your take on that? Uh, what I'd like to add on the previous one was like, if you actually talk to someone in your in your in his own language, chances are he's going to be surprised and excited about listening a foreigner talk, yeah. even at least trying to talk in his language. I mean, okay, it's Greek, but if I ever it's my language isn't that important, so not that many people get to learn it. But if I ever I think it happened a couple of times in the UK when I was a student in university, I heard someone talking to me in Greek and I was like literally. I was so happy and I was literally so curious and kept I kept asking questions like how did you learn it why and stuff like that so mm -hmm. and I, oh, what I was going to say is like chances are that a person is going to be excited about it and is going to like encourage you to keep on doing it yeah but obviously it depends upon the person I mean there are persons who won't get excited there are persons who will depends upon the mood if you if you just catch someone on the street like running to running late for a meeting, you know, obviously he's going to be, he won't be that happy. I mean, but mm -hmm. depending on the person, just I, I just wanted to let everyone know, like, not everyone is the same, has the same uh, willingness, like, not everyone's the same. Just find find the nor find the proper person to have a chat or be friends mm -hmm. with, you know, everyone is different in every single country. There are people who are, like, kind, polite, the opposite. It's just don't, don't get uh, disappointed at it. Just mm -hmm. keep on keep on trying to find what you're looking for. Yeah, know? yeah. And we only have one life. Now I remember Eminem's song. I mean, <laughs> you have only one shot. If you had one yeah. shot, but yeah, we only have one life. Like if you really block yourself, maybe you have something that will change the world only by learning a new language. You mm -hmm. reach some people that maybe don't speak your language, but you reach them just by knowing another language. You can literally change your life, like I changed mine. Maybe when I, when I was accepted by those universities in USA, and then they, they gave me a letter like, hey, your uh, enrollment did not went good because we decided to give your uh, scholarship to another person that is you know, poor. And if I didn't have English or another language, I wouldn't have this life. I would still maybe, oh, I'm going to do another thing. I'm going to try and find another university. And then I decided, no, I only have one life. Maybe I can do really uh, great things just using my English and the other language that I will, that I would learn afterwards. And then I decided, like, I wouldn't think twice. I just, no, I'm going to go. With it. I'm going to go and do whatever I want. If it is wrong, if it is right, I don't care. I'm only 21 years old. Back then, I was 18 years old. I'm only 18. So just risk yourself. Risk. Put yourself at risk. If you, if you think, oh, this person's going to judge me, but this person lives far away from you. It's a native. Oh, but mm -hmm. she, he or she lives near me. He's not going to do anything to you. He's not, or she's not going to kill you by, oh, you made a mistake in my native language. That's why I want to kill you right now. They're not nah, this, one, this thing would never happen. Like, no. That's a very extreme uh, situation. Yes. You know? yes, and they are afraid as well, just like you. They are afraid, <laughs> right? That's it, yeah. Mm -hmm. 
it is. So just, you know, I like to set up a day and time and just talk. Like, okay, mm -hmm. on Monday at 2 p.m., I'm going to have this conversation of 10 minutes with this person in specific. And then I put on uh, here on, you know, some, some place. And I, I do this. When I do, I put this, this check and I completed that, I would feel so happier. Like, oh my God, I finally done it. Mm -hmm. And then you, you can just take this pressure off your head and you can just you know, live normally, like everything we do, like in routine of, for learning languages, for example. Uh, what's your opinion about this consistency, how we develop, how can we develop this consistency to every day study a language and you know, be disciplined? Okay, so basically that the key in order to be consistent, according to me, my opinion, it's, mm -hmm. I think you just need to find a topic that you like and focus on that you're learning. For example, I like football. Mm -hmm. most, most Italian and Spanish that I've learned was at least the majority of it at the beginning that you just don't know any word in that, in that other language. And you just keep on learning languages. The very first topic that I kept uh, learning words was ab about football, mm -hmm. like press, press conferences uh, and stuff, player talking, giving some talking about the match after the match or managers commenting about the game and stuff like that, because it's, that's just what I like to do. Mm -hmm. I, I would get so bored in order starting like reading a book. I literally hate reading, reading books. So that way, just the, the activity through which I was going to learn the language would, would be so boring for me that I would literally like quit after a couple of minutes. I mean, just find something that you like it and search and start learning about that topic in your, in your target language. That's it. Mm -hmm. Football, then afterwards, something else, maybe traveling and anything else, just like start building on it. But start from something that you like because this is going to be fun for you. You won't see it as uh, like a task, like homework that you had to come back from school and you were like, I want to go out and play football with my friends, but I have to do some homework. Okay, I'll just get done with it like pretty fast in order to get done with it to get, and then just go out. Just If you just make it something the fun way, you won't, you won't be looking at the clock like, oh, I've, I've started for half an hour, so it's okay. That's enough for today, tomorrow. If you like it, it's going to be, it's going to be, that, that's going to be your free time, you know? If mm -hmm. you like it, you like it and you keep on doing it because yeah. you want to, because you like it, you know, because you have to. You know, mm -hmm. how about you? What do you think? Yeah, it's like falling in love. Like when you, when you fall in love with a person, you want to be with her, you know, all the time. Like, hey, can we talk today? Can we do that? It's the same thing for languages. If you really, my God, I'm in love with this language. Maybe it's not the same type of love, but it, if it is something that you really have this passion about it, you would do it without worrying about anything. You would just do it. You would turn on your laptop or another thing. You're, you're going to read a book without worrying. You're going to do that because you like it, really. And uh, that would be my, you know, my tip. And uh, another thing, worst case scenario, let's say that you have to learn a language because your job is making you to do it. And you really, oh, I, I don't like English, but um, I have to learn it. Maybe try and find something within the language that will, you know, fascinate you within the language. That would be, oh my God, I'm astonished. Look at this feature in this language. Maybe you can, you can create something or you can think ahead. Like maybe in the future when I learn English, I can finally have this freedom. I can take my son, my sons to another place and we have this, this freedom. Maybe you can create something that transcends your, this mm -hmm. really, um, how can I say that, shallow motivation that you have today. That is, I have to learn English because I want to reach the fluency. Maybe it is something bigger than this. I don't know, right? So What's your opinion? Awesome. On no, I was I was just going to add on this one because yeah, that this is a very particular case where where people mostly for their job, they they are like need to learn a language. They just don't start because they want to learn a language yeah. on their free time. Okay, what I would say about to those people would be, just imagine how is going to be the end result. You know, if you mm -hmm. actually how is it going to be after you learn the language. Mm -hmm. How's it going to be? How is your life going to be different in that? 
and you, because in that way you're just gonna stay motivated you know because there's something because you want to be on that on that uh, potential situation so just keep on working having in mind the bigger picture what's going to what's going to be your um your situation after getting to learn the language you know mm -hmm. how things are going to be because obviously it's going it's going to be better just imagine if you but if you can imagine it you can just do it all you need is some kind of motivation in order to push you towards that direction mm -hmm. and another thing is you know execution discipline for me it's one of the most important things that we we gotta have that is, we should do something even if it's not perfect. We're here today, I'm gonna study. Okay, do you have a plan? Um, maybe around approximately, I have something here, but um, I'm just gonna do it. This is execution discipline. You're just gonna do it without worrying if you're gonna learn, memorize everything, if you're gonna, you know, uh, on the other day, you're gonna forget everything, you know, you just do it. Because obviously you're a human being, you have a brain that is not going to, you know, memorize everything that you're learning right now. It's going to give attention to, to the ones that you, you know, it considers really important for you. Like the ones, the words that you are seeing um, often, really often. And um, yeah, don't worry about it. Just, just go and create something that is, um, my God, in the future, I'm going to be able to do that, but I have to start. And this is only temporary. Just do that. Execution discipline. Just sit down here and do your thing without worrying. Like, oh, I'm I'm not memorizing everything. What's your what's your take on this on this topic of you know forget, forgetting about words and phrases? How how do we go about it? Okay, on this topic, I'd say it depends upon each one's DNA, I'd say, because di different, where everyone's different, I'm different, you're different. So the same principle, there's no a, an optimum solution in order to learn a language. All those videos that are, that say, learn this language in 15 days, they learn this, this is the best solution. Th this is how you're going to learn most efficient, most effective way to learn a language in 15 uh, days, let's say. That, for me, that, that's, a, that's, a, that's a lies because I can learn better, for example, but by just listening. Someone mm -hmm. else could be learning easy, easier, like write, writing, like noting everything down. Some, someone else mm -hmm. just by watching videos, someone else just by mm -hmm. listening to radios and podcasts. Mm -hmm. So actually the, the way someone is going to get to learn a language depends upon each, each one. There's no, each one gets to, Brain, each each one's brain works differently. So all you just have to do is just experiment and see what what works best for you. I mean, you can just try noting down. If you, if you, if you see that it works for you, just keep on doing it. If you see that it's not, it doesn't help so much, and you can't memorize things that easy, you can just deviate and try something else. Just make sure. Just give, give it a give it a chance. Give it a chance just by listening. Just closing your eyes and listening to podcasts or watching mm -hmm. YouTube videos. I mean, any 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 methodology, any method that works for you, that's the one you need to follow. Yeah. What do you say? Mm -hmm. Yeah, basically, I have the same the same thoughts. Hey, John, do you think our method is good? Yeah, for some people, yeah, but for some others, no. I have here a lot of people that I that I read, that I listen to, that I think, oh, that thing in particular helps me but the other don't. But there are some, a lot of people in the comments that says, hey, the, your method really helps me. And that's what I think, you know, that is really interesting about those people that says, hey, my method is this. It's gonna work to everybody, no, but give it a try. If it works for you, that's good. But there are some things, of course, that, um, that goes beyond that. That is, let me try to explain that. Um, each one's method is different, but there are some things that are equal to, you know, in each method. And what do you think are those, those things that everyone should, should have? You mean like when they're learning a language, like vocabulary? And yes. Like for that. example, okay. uh, my personality, I like to write and I like to learn a language by listening and writing. 
I don't know, some other, I like to read and, you know, highlight some information. But there are some things that applies to everyone. What are those things? Okay, obviously, you need to work on all four components of learning a language, which is listening, mm -hmm. writing, uh, understanding, and speaking. Did I miss mm -hmm. someone? Or did, I, did I mention someone twice? I'm not sure. <laughs> anyway, anyways, you got me. So bas yeah. basically, you need to be able to understand what mm -hmm. the other person is talking about. So obviously, you need to, it, that's comprehension. Just, mm -hmm. but that, that, I think that's easy because we are blessed when we live in an age where we have technology. Technology is so advanced today. So YouTube, anything, applications on our phones, we, need, we live in the digital era. So it's so easy, it's so damn easy to have access and get access to any kind of topic from just by having an internet connection, a mobile phone, not even a laptop. Just go on YouTube and type anything that you like. That could be football, mm -hmm. fashion, traveling, anything. There's so much content that you can that you can consume in order to get better and in understanding the language mm -hmm. that you want to learn. Obviously, you need to be able to speak. Obviously, you can understand, but you, you also need to be able to transmit the message to the mm -hmm. other person. Yeah. In order to do this, that, that's going to be a bit more difficult because that's, I, I think that's the most uh, difficult part of it because speaking needs practice. You just, there's no, there's no, there's not an elevator to, to success about it. There's no, you know, just, you just, mm -hmm. just need to start, um, get out of your comfort zone, start speaking, make mistakes, keep on doing it, keep on studying, keep on trying, make mistakes again, get disappointed, get back on your feet and keep just keep doing it that that's it you just for me basically you just need to under be, be able to understand which is the easy part because just passive learning um, consuming too much con too, a lot of content and be able to transmit your message through which is finding mm -hmm. native just find natives online as you said tandem i talky facebook instagram anything just find someone that you have same interests if possible football mm -hmm. travel anything and with with which you it won't be like you 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 won't be obliged to have this um, interchange you know mm -hmm. this uh, language exchange it's going to be on your free time if you love the same thing it will be on your free time and you're gaining you're gaining you're learning it's mm -hmm. towards you're bringing you both to the the specific end point where you want to be having fun what do you say mm -hmm. about it? Yeah, the same thing. I agree totally with you, 100%. Like, we, if we don't understand someone, how we're going to speak afterwards? Hey, I can speak a language. Okay, and then the person starts really fast. And then, you know, uh, can you say that again? Oh, but, but I can say a few phrases. Okay, but you can understand me? <sighs> no, I don't. <laughs> so you need to understand. If you don't understand, maybe an understanding it goes for you know listening and reading because you're going to talk via you know whatsapp as well or another app mm -hmm. so you need to understand and i think that's the most not the most important thing but it is really important and there is a lot of people who you know no i'm not going to focus on listening every day i'm just going to speak okay you can do that you're going to improve a lot but you've got to have these passive skills like you got to listen you got to read in order to get more vocabulary inside of your brain. And uh, another two things that I think everyone should have, it is motivation. If you don't have motivation, you're just gonna you know, stop. Mm -hmm. And uh, no, why? Why I'm learning this language? And of course, goals. Not only on one goal, but a lot of goals, small goals every day that you're gonna achieve. For example, today, my goal is just 30, 30 minutes. And in these 30 minutes, I'm going to learn how to introduce myself. And that's it. You've accomplished. Yeah, that's right. And the other day, you're going to review what you saw. And then you're going to have uh, this other goal. That is, today, I'm going to learn how to, uh, let's see, say where, where I'm from. And the other day, how to say numbers. I don't know. I'm just creating. Uh, and all of a sudden, and then you ju just got to create. See, I got to learn this language by the end of this year. Okay, you can do that if you have this deadline. Now you know what you should do each month. So motivation, goals, and listening, reading, all of those skills 
they are already into this this goals. They gotta they gotta be in this goals. If you don't have them, yes, you're just gonna you know fail and everything. Now, Andreas, <laughs> American accent. Um, tell me, what do you think is gonna be your next language? Okay, for the time being, as I told you before, I prefer quality over quantity. So mm -hmm. before moving on to a next language, I prefer like almost not perfectionize, but reach a pretty high level in order to, because which we already discussed about it. I prefer like having deep discussions because that's that's what really means to know a language. I mean, if mm -hmm. I can if I can talk to you in a language and say to you the five or six phrases, that's not communication. I'm just repeating the only mm -hmm. phrases I've learned. And yeah. which, whichever the response you're going to give me, I won't, I won't be able to like escalate and elaborate on it, you know? Okay, mm -hmm. I've, said, I've told you this, you responded to me, okay, that's the end of it, you know? So for the mm -hmm. time being, I'm just focusing on taking my Portuguese on my Italian and Spanish and English mm -hmm. if possible level. And then I'll see, I'll see, I'll have to... It's kind of difficult to choose another language because in order to start language, in my opinion, you need, in order to be able and learn a language, you have to like everything about the language, like being yeah. in love with it. If you just say that I'm going to learn a language, um, for example, I'm going to learn Russian because there are so many speakers. But no, if you don't like, actually, if you don't love the language, if you don't like, mm -hmm. like the culture and the way it sounds, and everything that has to do it, that has to do with the language, you won't. That, yeah. That's what I believe. Unless if you really push yourself, I don't know, but still you won't have the same results if you actually love the language because you're going to, you, 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 you're going to be more motivated and have higher incentive to do it. So mm -hmm. even if you do it, you won't do it in the same pace. You, you would do it if you were motivated, you know? What do you mm -hmm. think about it? Yeah, I agree 100% again. And... Um... I define, I like to think that, for example, in Russian, like you said before, I don't know, there's something about it, like the accent, I don't know, the way that they speak, the literature, everything just fascinates me. I don't know, there's something that it really pushed me into this, like I, I wake up and the first thing that I want to do is listen to something in Russian. Why? I don't know. It, like, why do you love this person? I don't know. I just love this person. It but doesn't matter, if, actually. Right? Yes, it doesn't matter. If you can list a lot of a lot of things you like about this person, but there is something that that goes beyond that. That why do you love? I don't know. I just love it. And this this happens when you really go into the language. You really go deep. Like you really uh, take this dive and uh, really fell in love. It's it's amazing. I cannot explain in words mm -hmm. like this this feeling that you want to be with the language. You want to come. You want to think, even with mistakes. You just want to think. You just want to talk. You want to just want to listen. In. You just want to be in contact with with the natives. So it is something that I cannot teach you how to do that. Hey, how to fall in love? I don't know. I don't know how to fall in love with the language. You gotta live. You gotta take this language and give it life not only be with books or phrases like i i i know a guy on youtube that he does basically this that you that you said before he has learned a few phrases and then hey um do you speak finnish i don't know and then the person yes i speak finnish nice to meet you i have a lot of friends living in finland that's the phrase that, that's, and that's that, it that's it yes how old are you uh i like to be your friend <laughs> <laughs> you and see what really, I'm talking about. That that's the thing. That's the thing. You, according to me, you just don't speak the language. You just know yes, a couple of you phrases. Know you know, yeah. Just get deep into it in order. Okay, you don't have to be perfect as we said, but be able to have a conversation that keeps on yeah. escalates and elaborates and it takes you to another discussion. You know, just not basics. Mm -hmm. That's just the basics. Yeah. You know? mm -hmm. and yeah. I like to think that they they do this. Of, of course, you can do whatever you want. Like everyone can do whatever they want, but they do this. Like they learn a few phrases just to say, "Hey, I speak 
60 languages, language, yeah, 100 languages, and or you can do that just by thinking. If you have good thing in your heart, mm -hmm. like I'm learning all of those languages, just to motivate people, just to make few, just to make people feel better. Okay, you can do. But if you really want to learn a language, that's not the way that you're gonna do it. Like learn a few phrases, learn a few phrases, and that's it. Like hi, what's your name? Nice to meet you. You're nice friends. I would like to have a friend, right? That's so weird. <laughs> of course, it's know, not. You can do whatever they want. But it's true, um, it's true, it's true. yeah, it's true. It's true. So uh, we've come to the end. Would you like to say something for us to wrap this live up? Um, actually, I'm pretty sure we've covered the most important thing. Like all of the, uh, the points we've mentioned was pretty important. But I'd say the most important would be like, Find a first of all, just make sure that which is the reason for which you're learning a language. Are you learning? I mean, just make sure that there's a, a strong motivation behind all of behind the whole of it. Because mm -hmm. if not, you won't, you won't, just you just won't. Eventually you're going to quit. Just make sure you have you're learning, you're doing this for the right reasons. And then find something that you like in order to learn the language, at least at the beginning. Be consistent, be prepared that you're going to fail once, twice, three times, and even more mm -hmm. than that. But that's the key to success. I think that's that's the most of it. You just yeah. keep, keep on trying, keep on trying, that's it. Eventually, mm -hmm. sooner or later, if you don't quit, sooner or later you're going to go where you wanna be. That's yeah, it. How about you? for sure, what would you for say? sure. Yeah, this, basically what I wanna say is that um, if you're alive today, you have this great shot. Like you can do whatever you have in mind, just do it. Don't worry about whatever, whatever it was gonna say about you. If you wanna learn English and post it on internet, if you wanna learn French and post your own progress, don't be afraid. Maybe you're gonna be known just by this fact. You're gonna inspire a lot of people. So if you have something in your mind, just do it. If it is uh, if you're going to fail, because I don't believe in failure, because if you fail, you can learn from it and do it better. You, you're not going to stop your life just because you, uh, you make something wrong, you made a mistake. No, of course not. You're a human being. Everyone makes mistakes. And we should have this in mind. You're a really important person, and we need to accept that. No, but John... Um, there are a lot of people who have, you know, talent. I'm not a, you know, intelligent guy or intelligent girl. Of course you are. Everybody has something that could literally change the world. Like maybe you, you don't want to do that. You don't, you don't want to change the world. But maybe one person, you're, you're going to be this person. Uh, you're going to be the, your, the world for this person in specific. Just because you, I don't know, you posted a video or you're learning a language and this person got inspired by you and you can literally transform, change this person's life. So do something about your life. Don't be just afraid. Believe in, just believe in yourself. Just yes. Believe in yourself and that's just it. believe it. Mm -hmm. And act. If you don't act, if you just think like, oh, if you can dream, you can do it on... <laughs> Okay, you're dreaming, you have something in your mind. Now it's time for you to, you know, give life to your dreams and do something and, about it. And failure is part of the process, just yeah. that. Just yes, that. <laughs> of course it is, of course it is. Thanks so, for inviting me, thanks for inviting me, John. I thank you, I thank you. It was, <laughs> it was, a, it was a pleasure. I really it was a really like productive life, it was a really, mm -hmm. like, really productive life. Hope everyone gets benefits from it in, in his own way each mm -hmm. one and keep on doing what you're doing you're helping people <laughs> you too you too you you're really inspirational and i really got inspired by you know everything that you that you're saying and uh thank you so much you're a good friend you're a good partner and let's go keep on keep on learning keep on going and let's reach the fluency let's reach the failure let's reach everything because we got a lot to live all right, guys, hope everyone see liked you. this live and see you soon. Bye-bye. Bye. See ya.